right now you're listening to Janice Forsyth at 15, 22 and 47, 48, 49 seconds. Uh, good to have you along with you until four o'clock. Then it's News Drive here in BBC Radio Scotland. But right now, um, if you watch telly, if you're a fan of River City, you will know Ian Robertson. He's in it right now as Stevie O'Hara. It's just the latest in a long line of roles. On screen, both large and small, you'll see him in Rab C. Nesbitt, Shetland, the Debt Collector, alongside Billy Connolly, and uh, back in the day, Gillis McKinnon's brilliant film, Small Faces. Uh, well, he's going behind the camera to make a short film called Bridge, which is written by BAFTA winner Donna Francis Child, um, who is uh, quite an extraordinary person herself, having uh, written the series Taken Over the Asylum, which I'm sure... You all saw, and can you believe that goes back to 1994? Let's come bang up to date with the bridge. Uh, Ian and Donna are in our Glasgow studio. Welcome both. Hello. Hello. Really good to have you here. Um, so, you. Donna, um, th this is interesting, actually, because th this story isn't coming out of nowhere. It's got a wee bit of um, history now, hasn't it? It's been in radio and theatre. Yes, it has. What was the origin? What was the first manifestation? The first manifestation <laughs> was David McLennan at uh, Play Pie and Paint decided that uh, he was going to do for his 200th play a bunch of two-minute plays, and he asked me if I'd write one. Mm -hmm. So uh, Bridge was my two-minute play, and that's kind of how it started. And then wow, two <laughs> minutes. How much of a challenge was that? Is that like almost <laughs> the two minutes is the, like the pitch, in a sense, or the synopsis? Well, it was one had to be very disciplined oh. <laughs> in, yeah. in how to in how to make sure there was a beginning, middle, and end, and that it kind of had a structure and went somewhere. That yeah. was the challenge. But I suppose that's the thing that we, so you've got two characters that that helps, doesn't it? Yes. If you if you if you're being that kind of pithy, but then then it became uh, a longer piece. That's right. Theater, and then a radio drama, which we're going to hear a little bit. Um, of so, t tell us then about this, uh, uh, Ian. T tell us about then this becoming a short film. Well, it was kind of my fault that it became a longer piece, wasn't it? Well, kind of, kind of, because when I saw it at the two hundred, and I just thought it was extraordinary that Donna was able to tell such a, a full story in only two minutes um, and it made the hair stand up in the back of my neck so I phoned Donna and said could I run with this as a, a, a to get this made as a short film mm -hmm. and Donna said well you know I've been toying with the idea of a longer version maybe as a, an or and more or, or you know for the radio and then the next thing Donna sent me uh, a longer version uh, for uh, the or and more yeah. uh, which uh, she, she asked me to play uh, the man in it yeah. and she said can you see that it's for you and I couldn't see what the through line was she meant she says well I wrote it for you because he lies all the time <laughs> wow but what is it that Donna says that I tell the what is it I tell the truth that that sh that's a line from taking over the asylum I right. tell the truth that should be rather than mm. the truth that is yeah but that's a very lovely way of saying <laughs> yeah. Robertson's a liar he's it? a chancer <laughs> I'm a poetic liar yes <laughs> he's a chancer with good intentions though and this is the thing for you uh, Ian, I'm talking about you on screen. So, have you done any uh, kind of screen directing at all? Uh, not really. No, I'd done kind of documentary directing, but I knew, uh, funnily enough, uh, I, I've known for a long time. It was something that I was very interested in, in stepping onto that side of the camera. Gillis McKinnon tells me he knew when I was 13. Wow. Um, so <laughs> when I was talking to him about this and you know just getting a, a bit of advice from him, he said, "Well, you know, I knew when uh, when you were 13 and you you came down to the front of the cast and crew." For when you took the clapperboard out of my hand, he said, I thought then, oh, he's going to be competition one day. Uh, he said, I didn't think it was going to take 26 years. Oh. Um, but is it something you've been, you know, you know, if you in your fantasy scenario, would you have been doing it already? Um, I think so, but I think uh, the kind of, I mean, this experience uh, being a crowdfunder has been so intense that it's got to be the right project's going to be the right piece of work mm -hmm. um, so no I'm, I, I think I'm kind of where I should be I think it's happened at the right time um, th there's so much wonderful support falling behind this I have landed myself an extraordinary cast so I, I kind of feel like I'm where I'm supposed yeah. to be you know um, well before we get on to that before we get on to the film let's just um, hear a little bit from the BBC radio version which you were in Ian with my voice yes so <laughs> this is Ian uh, and Ailey McCormick here from from the radio version of Bridge from 2015. Look, I don't have a match. I don't have a lighter. And if you're trying to chat me up, you're doing a pretty crap Ch job. Chat you up? You think I'm trying to chat you up? 
But listen, I'm a happily married man. I have got a 13-year-old son. There's a photo of him on my phone. You want to see? No. Have you ever seen a better-looking boy? Yeah. Takes after his da, yeah? <laughs> have you got kids? No. Oh, you don't know what you're missing. You take them down to the play park and push them in the swings, and it's okay to go... Whoop, I mean, you do that in the street without a kid, they'll lock you up. Would you just go now? OK. OK. There you go, Ian Robertson and Ailey McCormick in the BBC <laughs> radio version of Bridge in 2015. <laughs> it's really good. Um, well, if I was directing him, I'd tell him to rein it in a wee bit. right, OK. <laughs> Less is more, Robertson. Oh, love it. Well, you can you can exactly do that with your with your cast this time. Uh, Donna, tell us a little bit about this thing, because I say people will know you from taking over the asylum, yeah. and that was set in this radio station uh, of a hostel for people with mental illness. You were dealing with the whole idea of mental health, d discussing all sorts of issues there, and it won a BAFTA, launched David Tennant's career, Ken Stott in his first leading role. Um, and and you're, you're looking at the whole issue of mental health and, and taboos about that in this film, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's hard to talk about suicide because, I mean, artistically, because, you know, all that's so depressing and most stuff that's done about suicide anyway is is about how someone goes downhill and something bad happens and then they take their life and um it doesn't have to be that way when when you can kind of break down the wall that people put up uh as if i don't i don't want to talk about this um and i don't want to talk to you to break that down is is really important and for both sides both for the person who is trying to support someone who may be suicidal um and you know if you talk about it it doesn't make it more likely mm -hmm. that that person will take their own life so the, one of the things there is it's really important to talk and, and and to break down that stigma that says oh you know if i if i start to if i start to even think about this uh then that person might you know yeah, take their life yes and in terms of the person who's feeling that way it's th it's amazing how often people say oh i i didn't want to bother them yeah <laughs> and that's the thing because you think you've taken over the asylum donna from 94 you know 23 years later there have been i don't know how you feel whether it's been glacial or not but there, there, the, some of the taboos have been broken a bit people yes. you're talking in all sorts of ways whether it's factual books fiction or, or different yeah. forms of entertainment about you know depression for example and, and opening up about that but maybe suicide is one of the last taboos um just tell me a little bit about you know, it's simple here isn't it it's, it's a man meets a woman on a bridge yeah 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 i mean in, we, what we've been saying is this this film because we've uh, because me as a first time director i don't meet the strict ca criteria for the the public funding bodies that's one of the reasons we've gone down this crowdfunding route and ultimately this is a film about the kindness of strangers and it's relying on the kindness of strangers to get made you yeah know? <laughs> so tell us more about that then because uh, this is something that people listening will be used to now for all sorts of people <laughs> who go go online and um you, you're looking for people to make contributions and, and presumably in return there are there's a sort of reward systems and stuff like that too aren't there yeah there are there are various perks if if people go on i mean if people go to www.bridgeshortfilm.co.uk that'll point them to a crowdfunder and tell them a whole lot about the film and and what we are up to there's you know regular updates but um yeah there's lots of perks on there to be had from you know as simple as getting a download link to the film or coming to a screening or, or being involved you know in, in in much other in, in other ways yeah, yeah. um so yeah i think you know i'm getting used to seeing crowdfunders i wasn't prepared for the experience of being involved yes. in one. it's a lot of hard work <laughs> it's kind of ins it's weird because it becomes you just don't switch off you know yeah. from the minute i wake up to the minute i go to bed it's all i'm thinking about is uh, are we going to hit our target are we going to get there and and but the support has been overwhelming i mean you mentioned uh you know donna's project taking over the asylum launching the career of the great and brilliant ken stott who uh tipped 700 pound into the crowdfund oh, the other marvelous. day which Yay. was it was very wonderful and generous because of them, it can so. be brutal with crowdfunding i don't know if we 
with you. Sometimes if you don't reach your target, then you don't get anything well, at that's, all. That's where we're at. Ah. Um, yeah, if we don't reach our target, we don't get uh, to make bridge. Because so. you're passionate about this. I can, I can tell that you and everybody involved in this, because it's not just, you know, it's absolutely not a vanity project. You feel, Donna, that this is important in terms of the subject matter. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I think that th th this, uh, I think that's what's important about this film is, you know, I could have easily, you know, just the vain, the vanity of an actor turning director, <laughs> asking people to to get behind it. But but, the, but I think there's something urgent about this film, particularly in the city of Glasgow, where the the statistics suggest there's a, a suicide every five days, roughly. Yeah. Um, that we need to just blow away the taboo. And like you say, you know, people are prepared. You know, I've talked about you know my drinking days and you know struggling with alcoholism and, and depression and things like that and and it, it is great that these taboos are are being blown away and yeah. that, and I think this is a, one of the ones that we just need to to get in about that and say as a society we need to start addressing this yeah um, and how much money are you what, what's your target our target is 21,000 pounds which in the world of making films is not much <laughs> but if you're starting from nothing and um, that is a, that's a, it's a lot to achieve but yeah. it's, it's a shame about the chicken and the catch-22 situation as you say you you know you don't have a track record as a director mm. but you're an incredibly experienced actor you've got Donna who's a an award-winning writer you've also got your composer tell us about him he's not yeah. an unknown chap no he is not <laughs> at all we've got the wonderful Mick McNeil who was the keys player in Simple Minds for a long time who's going to compose the an original soundtrack yeah. for the film and last but and not least your cast oh yes I mean unbelievable that I mean Clean I was cast, yeah. funnily well Don, Donna's Donna's delighted which uh, if uh, for the, the niche audience that might be listening or directors who've worked with Donna know that um, you kind of throw around names and Donna, eh, you know, but uh, we are overwhelmed with this cast. We've got Stephen Duffy, who's one of my oldest pals from Small Faces and um, was in Tinseltown and things. And um, I was a bit like, oh, is this jobs for the boys, me getting my pal in? But it, it was Donna, actually, that was really yeah. keen to... So I was glad that Donna... Well, soon, yeah, as soon as you mentioned Stephen Duffy, I thought, oh, God, perfect! Oh, yeah. perfect. <laughs> what is the quality that he has, then, for this, Donna? For me, well, I mean, there is a there is a real gentleness, and yet there is totally that West of Scotland swagger. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know who else could offer that. Yeah. Yep. And of course, uh, last but not least, we have the fantastic Katie oh, Murphy. Katie. Um, you know, when Donna said Ian's going to make this, and we wondered if you'd look at it, she apparently she said to Donna, "Oh, that's so kind, but let him know I'm okay. It's, <laughs> I won't be offended if he goes with someone else." Like, this, <laughs> this is Miss Toner from. Yeah. from Tutti frutti, and you know, I grew up watching the steamy every new year on the telly, and to have someone, I mean, uh, Katie's just, I mean, extraordinary. And yeah. we, we, even on uh, Skype, we, we got a couple of lines that are in the video on the Indiegogo page. Yeah. Uh, you, 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 she just did it once and you went, okay, moving on. Yeah. You know, she's just one extraordinary. Um, so to have a cast like that and a, and a great gang and, and that thing about not meeting the criteria, you know, we kind of thought, well, you can kind of get bitter and, and angry about that or you can just get, get on and do what you need to do. And what's wonderful about this is the fact we're on your show here, Janice, and there's been a lot of uh, press coverage about this project, we've already helped uh, raise awareness about this issue, yeah. and 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 people are talking, and and already that is that is fantastic. Yeah. Over a hundred people have put money in to the crowd fund already, and helped us. We're, we're just under seven thousand pounds on the the crowd fund, and we've still got two weeks to go. So you're over a third of the way there. Yeah, and and we're speaking to some uh, some lovely angels at the moment. Who, mm -hmm. who might be coming in with, with, with nice big sums to help us in that last week be very, yeah. very close. So things are looking really positive. And, Brilliant. And, uh, and there's been a lot of good conversation happening around um, the, the subject matter, which, which yeah. again, beyond the film, is incredibly positive and it's part of what the film has to achieve. Well, we wish you all the very best of it. Just as, The link is on my webpage. Just remind us of the link if people want to go and Yeah, it's www.bridgeshortfilm.co.uk. There you go. Uh, short and to the point. Uh, Ian Robertson and Donna Francis, thank you very much no, indeed. Thank you, Janice. Look forward to coming to the first screening. <laughs> you'll be, on the, you'll be high on the list. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Best of luck with it. Cheers. Cheers Janice. Thank Bye. you. Thank Bye. you. Uh, you listen to Janice Forsyth live on BBC.